Hi, everyone. It is June 23, 2021. We are now living in a country and, uh, well, a large majority of our fellow Americans have been indoctrinated into a cult, the left cult, the cult of uh, COVID, of wokeness, of racism. And when when people are cult members, it, you know, deprogramming them, it involves an awful lot of effort and time, which we don't have. But look at this. Unbelievable. About racism, anti-blackness, or violence. About racism, anti-blackness, or violence. I will use my voice in the most uplifting way possible. I will use my voice in the most uplifting way possible. And do everything in my power to educate my community. And do everything in my power to educate my community. I will love my black neighbors the same as my white ones. about racism okay it's frightening i'm sorry um you know what what this person is saying is a given okay but really the hands up you know the repeating the this is cult behavior this is scary now people would you know attack me for being a racist no i am not a racist uh, I just don't go along with all of the cult, indoctrinated, um, you know, woke thinking. Anyway, all right. <laughs> well, Loudoun County, Loudoun County School Board. Uh, there was a meeting that got out of hand, to say the least. The meeting was primarily about a new policy, 8040, in Loudoun County Public Schools, that is the transgender policy, the bathrooms, the uh, sports, pronouns, um, and, you know, there will be a penalty if anybody is caught using the wrong pronoun for a transgender student intentionally or persistently. Forcing upon others a speech that they do not want to speak violates our constitutional rights. Okay. There, I, I watched the school board meeting. It was about two hours. I listened to everybody uh, that spoke. There were parents that were supportive of this policy and a lot of people who were very against this policy for reasons that are obvious. Boys claiming that they're girls. Oh, and the claim doesn't have to be substantiated. So a boy can claim that they're a girl, I suppose whenever they want, and get into the girls' bathrooms, locker rooms, and compete on girls' teams. This is not only unfair, but it's also a safety issue. And any adult who doesn't recognize it as a safety issue, well, I don't know what to say to them. Um, competing on girls' teams with with the biological well with the biological girls when when you're in junior high school or high school and you claim that you are a girl when you are a boy if you haven't gone through you know that uh puberty blocking hormonal treatment for years you're still a boy sorry you are still a boy boys and girls are different that's why, up until now, we have always had girls' teams and boys' teams. Do I even have to say this? Can't believe where we are today. 
All right. Um, yeah, and it, the the pronouns you the teachers the staff everybody in the school they have to abide by the students the child's uh, pronoun of choice, and uh, that doesn't matter if it's different from the permanent educational record. Okay. Well, we've got a lot of divisive policies going on, including that critical race theory, the diversity, inclusion, equity program. Um, But I want you to listen to this woman who uh, says she's from Fairfax County, but the title of it is a Loudoun teacher, so she may be a Loudoun teacher. I don't know. But what she has to say is very important. I can ask you if you're pregnant. You can't ask me that question. I would love my minute. Yes, thank you. school board members in Loudoun County, they just cut people off if they're, you know, over their allotted time, even if they just have a few seconds more to finish what they have to say. It is such a practice of disrespect. It is so demeaning, uh, and it really needs to stop. Okay. In the very beginning, what she was talking about, school board member asked her, what is your medical exception for not wearing a mask. And she just said, you don't have the right to ask me. Okay. This is the kind of um, courage that all people need. So if you don't have that kind of courage right now, it's in you. All you have to do is access it, which means you've got to do some work on yourself. Now, she's absolutely right for all the students out there. You know, so many are now afraid to speak up. Teachers are afraid to speak up. They're afraid that they're going to lose their jobs. The students are afraid that they're going to be uh, disciplined or reprimanded or shamed in front of their peers. This is not the country. This is certainly not the kind of schooling that I went to. A whole lot of us went through. This is very different. What is that difference? It is Marxist indoctrination separating, categorizing, individuals, not based on class, but based on race. 
And if you don't know anything about what is happening in our public schools and the school board meetings, then I really highly suggest you put in that search bar on YouTube. Um, just put in school board meetings, CRT, and voila, you will see how divisive this policy is. Loudoun County has been quite loud. Loudoun County is uh, in Virginia. And of all the school board um, meetings that I've watched, and I've watched a lot, I'd say Loudoun County, the parents um, have been very loud. But they're not getting anywhere. This has been going on for months with the critical race theory the parents showing up at every school board meeting, the parents being retaliated against from the school board, the members of the school board. They have a Facebook page. They have a blacklist. They invite other parents to snitch on parents who are against crit critical race theory. Uh, what What is taking place is really... Well, it, it's, it sure does let you know school board members do not represent parents or the children. They represent someone else pushing these policies. So that someone else, you got to find out. Who's behind the curtain with this? You know, you have... I'd say, and I've heard other parents, but I, I haven't been able to verify it, a majority of the parents in Loudoun County want critical race theory eliminated, gone. No more of this diversity, inclusion, equity, which is essentially you know, the, the same thing about categorizing the students, segregating the students, and bringing in a new racism, just a different color. Now, the racism is against all of the white students. Well, guess what? That doesn't heal us, and we were in the process of healing. You know, we were progressing with our healing in terms of the racism in our country, and now we're going backwards, doing the exact same thing, except now uh, against white people, and I guess a whole lot of black people, Americans might feel that that's absolutely fine. Well, guess what? There's a backlash, okay? You cannot heal with hate, okay? You can't heal a disease with only uh, furthering the disease, okay? So, um, getting back to the transgender policy... 8040 that the school board now has decided that they're just going to implement in Loudoun County schools. You know, listen to this student talk about. Well, I think not sure if that student comes up, maybe the parent does and then the student, but you'll hear her. Mr. Mahadabi, sorry if I said that wrong. Do your constituents know that you threw their daughter's privacy rights out the window when Brenda Sheridan demanded it? Do they know that you sacrificed their daughter's modesty to save your political aspirations in the Democratic Party? Do they know that it was your vote that moved the crazy gender policies out of the Pupil Services Committee in the first place? I wouldn't have to be standing here today if not for your committee vote last week. Even if you do the right thing for girls today and vote against the inevitable move to suspend the rules that I know you're going to do, and even if you vote against the policies themselves, it was your cowardice and lack of principles that made this happen today. Jolene Grover to be followed by Dana Lockhoff. If I get knocked unconscious, I don't just stop being a girl because you don't know what my preferred pronouns are. Being a girl is not all in my head. 
Boys who identify as girls are no different from boys who identify as boys, except in their feelings about themselves. But, boys, but feelings are not why we have separate bathrooms. We have separate bathrooms because of what our bodies do in them. Bodies matter. Calling girls bigots because they don't want to use the toilet in a stall next to a boy or get undressed next to a boy is cruel and wrong. It is embarrassing enough for a girl to change a pad knowing all the other girls can hear the crinkle of the packaging. But telling her that she must be okay doing it in the presence of boys because their preferred pronouns are she, her? How evil can you be? Girls' bathrooms do not exist to validate identities. Girls' bathrooms do not exist to validate identities. Wow. Okay. So, other parents during this uh, school board meeting brought up a lot of the safety issues. And, you know, I will link below to the full board meeting. Well, you'll see it. what this school board did. They were the ones who created an awful lot of the chaos that took place. Now, you see, this is a full auditorium. 259 parents signed up to speak to this school board. Now, again, months of these parents voicing their opinion, telling the school board what they need to do, and the school board literally ignores them and just does whatever the hell it wants to do. And treating the parents like they're little kitties uh, with such disrespect and, frankly, an attitude of uh, contempt for the parents. And I've watched a lot of these Loudoun County school board meetings, and it is pretty wow. Yeah, frankly... I don't know how a lot of these parents have been able to um, just restrain themselves, but a lot got out of hand yesterday. This is a state, a former state senator of Virginia speaking right here. I'm retired Senator Dick Black of Ashburn, Virginia. You retaliated against Tanner Cross by yanking him from teaching for addressing a public hearing of this board. The judge ordered you to reinstate Mr. Cross because if his comments were not protected speech, then free speech does not exist at all. It's absurd and immoral for teachers to call boys girls and girls boys. You're making teachers lie to students and even kids know that it's wrong. This board has a dark history of suppressing free speech. They caught you red-handed with an enemies list to punish opponents of critical race theory. You're teaching children to hate others because of their skin color. And you're forcing them to lie about other kids' gender. I am disgusted by your bigotry to be followed by Donna Russell. Okay, now, <clears throat> watch what happens. Yeah, they're standing and they're just, you know, flapping their hands, right? Because they were told, they were told that they couldn't clap. And if they clap, well, we're just going to have to decide whether or not to cancel the meeting. God forbid they clap. All right. Well, that state senator got them, you know, to uh, rather excited. And yes, they're clapping. Okay. Well, uh, and everything that he said is true. They got caught with the blacklist. They got caught setting parents against parents. And that's how they roll. Now, Loudoun County, the school board, has said that they found KKK flyers 
or literature or something uh, outside their homes or out in their doorstep. Okay. The lying in our country is so, it, it, it's just pathetic. It's just pathetic. And, well, what that has done is you can't trust anybody. When I saw the article about the Loudoun County school board members saying that they got these flyers from the KKK, everything that the Loudoun County school board did prior to that, there's no trust that I have in these people. So they've just been trying to set up the parents who oppose critical race theory and make it this, yeah, the divide and conquer of the left and the right and all of it. They cut off a former state senator. Well, I guess they didn't like what he was saying. But they did. The parents did, right? What happens next? Madam Chair, I move to end public comment. Second. There's been a motion to end public comment. Is there a second? I second. second. Motion made by Ms. Reeser and seconded by Ms. King. Is there any discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. Aye. Ms. Corbo, can I record your vote, please? Aye. Thank you. The motion carries 9-0. Public comment is now ended. We will move to our next agenda item. So they cut off the mic. They're taking a recess. They will not listen to any more speakers. And... 259 signed up. They only, I, well, I heard on one of the news shows that it was 51 that got to speak. She's ending the school board meeting because they clapped. How dare you? Okay. So, um, let's see. This is another speaker. I'm reminded of the tyranny of communist China, where your money is legally stolen and then used in government schools, not public schools, these are not public schools, these are government schools, like here, to indoctrinate children against their parents. My child is not oppressed, and don't assume that. As long as you Marxists push your unconstitutional agenda on my child, she will not be returning back to Mountain County schools. Okay. Unbelievable. That's um, the lady I was talking about. Yeah. As the parents of... Now, yeah, oh my God, mainstream media, I have to say that everything, the four minutes or four and a half minutes of this new segment on Fox, everything that they said was true, okay? So if you want to check it out, go right ahead. Um... So this is what took place uh, when the school board refused to come back and listen to the parents. It's what we need to base so our. So you don't agree that it's your constitutional right? So you don't agree it's our constitutional right? The essentials: math, science, English, and math. What's gonna happen? I'm asking you to stand up for our rights and protect our rights. You should be too. No, and I'm asking you very nicely. Well, to stand up for our rights. Mike Chapman, you get Mike Chapman to tell us if we walk out. Let's call Mike. If you do not want to hear me, that should be your resolution. Actually, I got his phone number. Call Mike Chapman. Because this is not illegal. We just want to be heard. There's attorneys in this room. 
when it's so under the source of judgment. If this is the beginning of what is happening in Russia, what is happening in Venezuela, what is happening in China, what is happening in Cuba, you and I must stand as a man of God bless America and God bless the parents. Hey everybody, my name is Trump. Take your way outside. outside. You can assemble outside. Please make your way outside. It's not just upset. You guys are infringing on people's First Amendment rights. First off, what's your name? John. I'm Brandon. Nice to meet you, John. Can, can we talk? Can we just like go over here and talk? I can talk to you right here in front of all the, everything else here. These guys would love to hear you talk. Let's see how you guys justify taking people who came here with speaker slots so they could stand right here and press their First Amendment rights. I'm talking. I was supposed to stand right here and so were 200 other people and be able to share with these people why they care about this county and the morals that this county is actually going to support or not support. And they walked out. All these people were doing here was taking the time to be able to show and share, at least with their own people, why they're here. They have every right to do that and to press their rights and their regrets in terms of what's going on in this county. And you guys are being a tool of that thing, all right? And, and as a result, you guys are actually supporting the suppression of people's rights. John, are you refusing to leave at this time? Yes, I'm refusing to leave. Deputies. Please arrest this individual for trespassing. Oh my God. Listen, John, put your hands behind your back for me. Come on. Please, thank you. Based on what transaction? What did I do wrong? Just put your hands behind your back for me, sir, please. What, tell me what I did wrong. Sorry, I screwed up with the videos. That's apparent there at a school board meeting in Virginia getting arrested while protesting against critical race theory and a transgender policy. Loudoun County in Virginia has been in the headlines the last few weeks after multiple parents were filmed addressing the student school board on issues they didn't agree with. Today a school board meeting got out of control when the crowd became rowdy, resulting in two reports. Okay, so when I listen to the mainstream media reporting on what takes place, you saw, did the parents become rowdy? They stood up and they were applauding the former state senator. That's not rowdy. That is a misinterpretation that you are reporting right there. I don't like it at all. But, yeah, I mean, at the end, boy.
Okay, so a few parents got arrested. Um, you know, the cops are just you know doing what cops do. Um, but at, in the background, you can hear that they took the microphone and they were still, you know, uh, voicing what they came to voice. Now, the reason why parents are not being heard, respected, listened to, considered is because this is an agenda that, yeah, the left is pushing through all public schools. It's a dangerous agenda because, well, it's not only divisive in the classroom, but it's divisive outside the classroom. It's divisive with the parents. It's divisive with the kids. It's divisive with the teachers, but they get a paycheck and they... A whole lot of them just decide to go along to get that paycheck. But, you know, I was also listening to DeSantis uh, today announcing, or yesterday, announcing the uh, a new civic literacy reform law, which is very different from the civic literacy that I mentioned in my video yesterday, our federal government, the Department of Education, the literacy is teaching the kids how to uh, recognize misinformation that they might hear on social media. This civic civics uh, reform law, I'll let you listen to just a few minutes. Um, and, well... I think a whole lot of people are going to be moving to Florida. Good afternoon. Great to be in Lee County and want to thank Superintendent uh, Savage as well as Principal Mason Clark for having us here. Also want to thank uh, all the great folks we have with us. We've got uh, our Education Commissioner Richard Corcoran, our Speaker of the House Chris Sprouls, uh, Senators Pasadomo and Rodriguez. And Sorry, let me move it along a little bit. You don't have to listen to all of the introductions. Hang on. Uh, it's an honor to be here. Uh, we want to have, uh, we want to be known as the number one state for civic literacy in the nation. Uh, and today we're going to sign three bills that address key pillars of our civic literacy efforts. It's crucial to ensure that we teach our students how to be responsible citizens. Uh, they need to have a, a good working knowledge of American history. American government and the principles uh, that underlie our Constitution and Bill of Rights. And these e efforts are needed. Uh, a recent survey found that only two in five American adults can correctly name the three branches of government. Uh, more than a third of Americans cannot name any of the rights that are protected by the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. And in 2018, a poll found that only 36 percent of Americans could pass a multiple choice version of the citizenship test that our naturalized uh, citizens have to take before becoming American citizens. And so uh, we've got a lot of work to do. And what I'd like to remind people is, is as we do all these important things, I mean, you know, reading, writing, math, all the different sciences, all this stuff, it's very important. Once students graduate high school, some will go to college, some of them will do other things, and we're big supporters of vocational education and some of the other alternative pathways. Uh, whatever you do, this civics is going to be relevant because you are going to be a citizen. You're going to have to discharge the duties of citizenship, and we want people to be able to do that uh, with a very strong foundation. So today we have three bills. Um, the first bill I'll sign is House Bill 5. It does a number of uh, really important things. One, it uh, has the Department of Education. It tasks them with developing and approving uh, an integrated civics curriculum. Uh, it's very important that students graduate high school with uh, a key knowledge of, of, of certain key principles and facts. And I think that that civics curriculum can really provide a guide to how that should be done. Uh, the bill also expands uh, our previous efforts in civics to add a requirement for the high school government class that um, students receive instruction on the evils of communism and totalitarian ideologies. 
Uh, we have uh, a number of people in, in Florida, particularly southern Florida, who've escaped uh, totalitarian regimes, who've escaped communist dictatorships um, to be able to come to America. Uh, we want all students to understand the difference. Why would somebody flee uh, across shark-infested waters, say, leaving from Cuba to come to southern Florida? Uh, why would somebody leave a place like Vietnam? Why would people leave these countries uh, and risk their life to be able to come here? It's important that students understand that. Now, as part of this bill, Florida will create a portraits and patriotism library so students can learn about real patriots who came to this country after seeing the horrors of these communist regimes. We actually have uh, folks here today. Uh, you'll hear from uh, her in a minute, Anna uh, Abauza. She came to the United States when she was a teenager, fleeing from Nicaragua when the Sandinistas brought socialism to that country. She graduated from the University of Florida, met a, met a Venezuelan, and moved to Venezuela. Well, she had a great life there for a time, and then you had another socialist dictatorship take over and destroy her other country. So once again, she risked her life to come back to Florida with her family, making sure the next generation understands what people like Anna have had to go through for the rights and freedoms we enjoy in this country is exactly why that bill was written. I jumped over uh, the second bill, which was essentially the literacy, the civics literacy requirements uh, in college as well as high school. But this is the third bill. Finally, I'm signing House Bill 233. The bill requires colleges and universities to conduct annual assessments on the intellectual freedom and viewpoint diversity uh, at these institutions. It used to be thought that a university campus was a place where you'd be exposed to a lot of different ideas. Unfortunately, now the norm is really these are more intellectually repressive environments. You have orthodoxies that are promoted uh, and other viewpoints are shunned or even suppressed. We don't want that in Florida. Uh, you need to have a true contest of ideas. Students should not be shielded uh, from, from ideas and we want robust First Amendment speech on our college and university campuses. And I Now I'm going to take you to the woman from Nicaragua. Governor, yeah. thank you all. I am very honored to be with you today. Uh, as he said, I, I came here when I was 16 years old from Nicaragua, running away from that um, Leninist Marxist regime. I was president of the school government, uh, and they were trying to brainwash us in thinking that they were bringing benefits and well-being to the people of Nicaragua. Obviously not. Right now, that country in Nicaragua, uh, the one that I was born in, um, is even worse than the day that I left. So I'm thankful to be here. I would defend this country with my life if I had to. And I tell you that listening to my granddaughter talking to me about socialism not being that bad is the worst thing that can happen to me. So we have to push these bills and we have to show our young people what it really is. And my experience is nothing compared to my friends here who have been real um, victims of torture and um, horrible things. So thank you for being, for having me today. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, so I will link below. You can listen to, you know, the entire uh, video and the press conference after. But um, I know that a lot of people will say, oh my God, no government works. Well, that's true. Okay, but are, do you really think that considering, considering the condition of the human race today, that we could just disband government and allow people to just, you know, live however the hell they want to live? Uh, the condition of the human race doesn't allow that right now. Getting back to, you know, the basics of the Constitution that would be a real big help. Then we can discuss, you know, after generations, perhaps healthier generations, then discuss, you know, living in accordance with natural law. But right now, we ain't at that place where we can 
just get rid of all government. So I have to hand it to Ron DeSantis, who kept the schools open during the COVID uh, lockdowns, um, who got rid of critical race theory and is bringing in, you know, a curriculum that will teach students the horrors of communism so that they're not indoctrinated, you know, as they are today, where they think socialism, hey, that's great. It's not. So if you're still with me, thank you for listening. And um, this, you know, what was happening in Loudoun County should not be happening at all. Not at all. Why is it happening? Well, you get to a point where people are so frustrated, they're not listened to at all. They're disrespected. So you end up with this. It's, it's the school board's fault, not the parents'.